Okay, this is for Algebra 2, Lesson 23A. This is just a recap of what we did in class. Right here is a standard equation for a circle, and HK represents the center of the circle. Hopefully R would be your radius, that's obvious, and remember, radius is half your diameter. So, for example, if you have a circle at 0, 0, the center is 0, 0, and the radius is 5, okay, what would that equation look like? Well, you always go x minus the x value, which right here, this is your x value on your center, and you go y minus the y value, which happens to be 0, and it equals the radius squared. So look what happens, x minus 0, that's just x squared, y minus 0 is just y, so you have y squared, equals 25. So this right here would be an equation of a circle at 0, 0, because nothing's being added or subtracted, with a radius of 5. If you were going to graph that really quick, you always start by graphing the center first, which was 0, 0. The radius is 5, so I just kind of go out 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, in every direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. And then I just kind of sketch in a circle. I am, I mean, make it kind of, kind of neat, all right, but it would look something like that. Okay, so look at number um, one from 23A. It looks like this. It gives me this equation. And I can tell real quick, because nothing's being added or subtracted right here, that my center would be zero, zero, and my radius would be six, because the square root of 36 is just six, okay? All right, let's try a little harder one. Look at 23A number three. They give me this. The center is three, negative three, and the radius is four. All right, so here's my equation. Remember, let me jot out my standard equation for a circle real quick. This right here represents my center, the H and the K. So you're gonna always go X minus, and this is the X value of the center. So I'm gonna do X minus three. What you got to be careful with is your signs because it's always y minus, and look what my k value is. It's a negative 3. So when you go y minus a negative, a minus a negative is a plus. So you got to be real careful right there. My radius is 4, and 4 squared is 16. So right here would be an equation of a circle at 3, negative 3 with a radius of 4. And here's an easy way of looking. Notice what makes this 0 inside here. Do you see it would be a 3? Because 3 minus 3 is 0. That's how I knew my center was 3. What makes this guy 0 is a negative 3, because negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So notice that's my center. If you're going to graph that, and let me use this little graph paper right here, just because it's easier. Start with your center, which is 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, right there. My radius is 4, so from the center, I'm going to go 4 units in about every direction I can. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm kind of estimating there. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So there we go. And then I just kind of sketch it in like this. If you want to, get you a compass, okay? And then I label this that this has a radius of 4, okay? So there you go. That's how you do a circle. Now, real quick. What if, this is number five, let me get a clean piece of paper real quick. What if it looks like this? This is not in standard form, okay? So you're going to have to remember how to complete the square to get in standard form. So get your x's together, and remember, I'm wanting it to look something like this. So how do you find that magic number is you're going to half it and then square it. So half of two is one and one squared is one. So I'm gonna add one here. If I do that, I've gotta add one over here. And that way, I can write this as x plus one. Because remember, x squared gives me the x squared. You can find this number. You can either do what you got when you halved this. When you half two, you get a positive one. Or think about one squared is one. Okay, now let's do the y's. How do you find that magic number? You're gonna half it and square it. Half of four is two. 2 squared is 4. So if I'm going to add 4 on the left, i got to add 4 on the right. 
so right here I can now write this or write this as y plus 2 squared. Remember half of 4 is 2. And right here we get 9. So here's my equation. From this equation I can tell my center. My center would be negative 1 because that's what makes this 0. And it would be a negative 2 because that's again what makes it 0. Negative 2 plus 2. And my radius would be 3. All right. All right, so that's a circle. Also in this book, let me throw this away. I'm going to get another clean piece of paper. Also in this book, we talked about an ellipse. Okay, so let's go over an ellipse just real quick. Here is the standard form for an equation of an ellipse. Oh, good, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, this always has to equal 1, and right now this looks pretty gross, but I'm going to do just one real quick to show you how simple this is. Obvious, let's hope this is obvious. This H, did it click off? No. This H and K, again, represent your center. Okay? So, for just a minute, this is number 7 on 23A. Here's what you've got. My first thing, I know, first of all, that this isn't a circle. It looks so much like a circle. But notice, the reason you can tell it's not a circle is because the numbers in front of the x squared and the y squared are not the same. Notice there's a number out here and it's a 4, and this number out here is a 1. And you know a circle has to be the same distance all the way around, so this is not a circle. Okay, so I know it's an ellipse because they're both being squared, and I'm adding. So what I'm going to do is I want this to equal 1, just like over here in my standard equation. So I'm going to divide everything by 36. So let's see, I'm going to get x squared over 9, because 4 goes into 36 9 times. And this would be my equation of my ellipse. Now what can I tell from this? I can tell a lot. I can tell that my center is 0, 0, because nothing is being added or subtracted from my y's, just like on your circle. And we'll do some here in a little bit where they're not on 0, 0. So this is what you do. Let me get a little graph again. Always start by graphing the center. Now, look under here. Under your x, there's a 9. You can tell which direction or how far to move on your x-axis by taking the square root of 9. And everybody knows that the square root of 9 is 3. So what I'm going to do is go over 3, 1, 2, 3, in, on the x-axis. 1, 2, 3. Okay? Now, the y-axis goes up and down. This is going to tell me how far to go up and down on the y-axis. The square root of 36 is 6. So I'm going to go up 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I'm going to go down 6. And you can see right here, I've got a nice little ellipse. Egg. Yeah, an egg or an ellipse. <laughs> Definitely not a circle because it's not the same distance from the center. These right here are called, I've always been told they're called kind of your vertices. This book calls them your um, extremities. These would be your x extremities because they're going this direction. So my x extremities here, extremities, would be the point one, two, oh, it is at three, zero, and negative three, zero. And my y extremities, and I'm going to abbreviate, that would be what? Zero, six, and zero, negative six. Okay? All right, let's try one that's a little harder than that. I'm going to only do a couple more problems here. Let's do number nine. And we've got this. Let's graph it. Oh, yeah. Okay, again, how do I know that this isn't a circle? Because the number out here in front, they are different. If they were the same, it would be a circle, but it's not. So I know it's an ellipse. I want this to equal one, so I'm going to divide everything by 144. Now, hopefully things go in there evenly, and it does. 16 will go into 144 nine times. So I've got this. 9 goes into 144 16 times. So I've got this. And they're being really nice, giving you nice, perfect squares. Here's my equation of my ellipse. My center of my ellipse is, well, what makes this 0? Negative 1. What makes this 0? So there's your center. Okay, so when you get ready to graph it, and that's what I would do next, as soon as you get your equation, graph it. Right here, start with your center, negative 1, 1. 
under your x, remember x always goes in this direction. Under your x is a 9. So you're going to want to take the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So you're going to want to go 3 either directions, both directions from the center point. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. Oops, make sure it's on that little dot. 1, 2, 3. There it is. Okay? Under your y is a 16. Remember, y goes up and down. So you're going to want to go plus or minus 4. How did I get that? Because the square root of 16 is 4. So I'm going to go up and down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And there's your ellipse right there. Okay? How do you find your extremities? These would be your x extremities because we're going this direction. Okay? You can either just look at your graph. That point is the point, what, 2? Gosh, my eyes are getting blurry in my old age. What is that, 2, negative 1? And this x, x extremity over here would be 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. Those would be your x extremities. Your y extremities would be the point, what is that? Negative 1, 1. Negative one, negative one, one, two, three. And negative one, um, one, two, three, four, five, negative five. Those would be your y extremities here, okay? Mm -hmm. um, another way I do it is notice my center, and this will be the last thing we do. My center is negative one, negative one. Did I graph that wrong? I did. It's supposed to be negative one, positive one, but same difference. So um, told you my eyes are tired. Notice my point was negative 1, 1, and I think I did negative 1, negative 1. Don't do that. But hopefully that gives you guys enough to get started, okay? And we can recap this in class. There you go.